All right, guys and gals, it's about that time of day again here, folks. Newsletter time. JJ here. Schooltrade.com. Sidewaysmarkets.com is our web address. It's Thursday evening, November 13th, 2014. Boy, we are flying through the second week of this 11th month of the year. Boy, are we having fun yet? I mean, come on, guys. Are we, are we having fun yet? Are we having fun yet? If you if this isn't getting you excited, I can barely even sleep right now. I can't wait to get back to my desk tomorrow morning to get this Friday going. Boy, do I have an exciting newsletter in store for you guys tonight. Gold still trades sideways. Russell goes all the way up and then all the way back down. That's probably where they come up with that term, big pops equal big drops. And, ah, boy, I don't know, I, I happened to look a little bit at crude today and just a little bearish, just a little bit of a short going on there on crude. Oh, my goodness, where where do I start? Where do I start? Well, before we jump into the charts, talk about what happened today and get ready for the final day of the week. Boy, i got to catch my breath here. What an exciting day we had here today. Before I jump into the charts, though, want to make sure you guys remember here, make sure you're watching our newsletter on our blog right now at Sideways Markets. There are three reasons why you need to get yourself over here to Sideways Markets if you're not watching the video right now on our blog. If you're watching it on our YouTube page, there's a link conveniently in the description of the video. So take that and that'll bring you back over here as well. Three specific reasons why you got to get over here to Sideways Markets here. First of all, you can download all of my charts here today as well as all the bonus charts, right? I got a bunch of other multiple time frame charts here that you can download for tomorrow. That's going to mean that whether you're a student with me here at School of Trade or not, you've got all the same resources here, right, we'll be using tomorrow in our trade room. Second thing here, upper left-hand corner, free pass. You might be wondering what it feels like to be a member of School of Trade. Maybe you'd like to join my live trade room, see how we take some of these trades every day. I would love to give you a free pass so you can get Exclusive access to our trade room before registering as a member. Grab your free pass in the upper left-hand corner. And then last but not least, the third thing here today, lower left-hand corner, right above my ugly mug, you'll see a spot for your name and your email address. We have a nightly newsletter mailing list. That way you never miss another newsletter ever again. As soon as the newsletter is done, once it hits the presses, I'll send it out to you guys in an email and that way you never have to worry about missing another newsletter ever again. All right, guys, three things over here. First, make sure you download the charts for tonight. Second thing is grab your free pass, upper left-hand corner. Come out and join me as a guest in our trade room. And, of course, join that mailing list. Now, guys, if you join our mailing list or if you register for your free pass, please be aware I'm going to send you a verification email. It is imperative that you check your email, check your spam, check your junk. I'm going to make sure that you're not a robot and make sure we've got the right email address for you so we can commence sending you out our nightly newsletter. All right, guys. Very, very exciting day today. Can't wait to get back here again for tomorrow. Boy, it feels great to be a trader right now, doesn't it? We knew this time of the year was going to be the best time of the year, and it has not, it has not disappointed. Let's start out here first with our mighty mini Russell. Now, here's one of the anchor charts we're going to use tonight, but if I zoom all the way out here, that's really where you get a good look at this. If I zoom all the way out on this anchor chart, right, keep going, keep going, right? There you go. Now you can see a little bit more of this, right? So we're on a big, big rally here. This is literally going back to the 15th of October. So we're borderline about a month into this move higher here. And we are literally scratching our way up to that 1,200, right? That's a big psychological level there, that 1,200 level. Okay, so we look at this anchor chart now, and now you begin to see kind of where we are in this big thing, right? So the Russell is extremely bullish, right? All the E-minis are bullish right now. And for the most part, it's thanks to a strong dollar. But really, for the, really ultimately, though, the reason why the E-minis and all the equities are so bullish, well, it's, it's because there's no other game in town, right? The real estate market hasn't gotten back in its feet yet, really. You know, it's stable, but it's not growing. Uh, you know, our, our discount rate here in the U.S. is what? A whopping quarter percent, right? 
I, I got a I got an ad from my bank the other day that said, "Open up a savings account and we'll only charge you a few hundred dollars a year." And I'm going, "Wasn't there like a time in history when you actually like, oh, you know, got like, you know, a return on your savings accounts?" So bottom line is most savings accounts here in the U.S., they aren't savings accounts at all once you include inflation, right, and the little fees they tack on there. Or God forbid you overdraw the darn thing, right? So there's no other place to put your money, right? A zero Fed funds rate gives consumers absolutely no reason to save their money, which is exactly what a – uh, kind of a you know dovish Fed is looking for right now, right? So we know equity markets are being spurred higher by again the 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 lack of incentive to save, the lack of any other options out there, right? You're not going to put your money in European equities right now, right? Only thing safer than European equities would be your <laughs> European banks right now. I know a mattress that's a little bit more safe than that, but we know though that we're bullish. So we know we're bullish. How am I going to trade this? I want to buy it, obviously, but I want to buy it on a pullback, right? I don't care whether I'm buying a new home, buying a new car, right? Buying some wild sockeye salmon from Alaska, right? Or whether I'm buying an equity pullback, right? I want to buy it at a discount. Anything I buy, I want to make sure the trend of that price is going higher, right? If I'm going to buy a new home, it'd be a good idea to buy a new home when the home prices are averaging higher and I can buy it in a good neighborhood at a discounted price. So I want to buy it at a discount. And you can see right now we are right in a beautiful buy zone. Now, guys, I, I, I got to be honest. This, the way this price action looked today, this thing literally just collapsed. And so usually what happens is when we see these moves higher, you know, usually we'll go up and then we'll kind of stair step it down a little bit and then we'll find some support and we'll make our move higher, right? I'm going to be looking to buy, 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 right, after it starts to make that move higher. Today, though, boy, what we saw today was we literally saw it up and then, wham, it just came tumbling right back down at 11 o'clock this morning. So if you were short on it, it was it would literally would have made you a couple thousand bucks in a few seconds. But for the rest of us here looking to follow this trend, we're now in a great spot to be a buyer on the Russell. I have some wonderful targets overhead. I get a trend line target, top of the channel. We get targets up here at 1200, 1204, four. But I'll tell you right now, though, after watching the price action today, my gut tells me for tomorrow, we need to see a little bit of strength here from these buyers. I definitely want to see these buyers pick this up and run with it tomorrow morning. Now, if it goes a little bit lower, don't be afraid here because you can see we've got another buy zone down here at 64.9, 61.6. So right now, we've got buy zone here, 74.2, which literally right now, all I need is a couple higher highs and I'm off for the races buying again. But if we do collapse here, though, be on the lookout for the buy at that 64.9. And I'm not going to call this bearish until we go below 53.7. And then get a lower high below 53.7. Here's something they don't teach you in day trading 101. I don't worry about a failed bullish trend until we break below support. And then we use that support as resistance. I'm not going to call this a bearish trend until I see that high. Because what happens quite a bit is we'll push below it, right? Things happen. Crazy things happen all the time. We push below it, right? And we go right back up again, right? So we're not going to call it a bearish move here until we get below that key level of support. And then even then, lower lows are not a big threat to a, right, to a, uh, I'm sorry, Lower highs are not a big threat to a bullish market. Okay, lower. I'm, <laughs> I keep on confusing it. Lower lows aren't a threat. It's the lower high. Is it Thursday? Is this Jupiter? Yeah. Lower highs, right? That's what I'm looking for. Get below that resistance and then keep on pushing. And that's where I'm going to call it a bearish market, right? So right now, that level, if I can get my act together here, is 53.7, right? So I want to go below it retrace and then we'll call it bearish but not until then i'm looking to buy 
looking to buy and looking to buy here as we go as we go lower here remember long-term buyers right now there is no fundamental difference between this price now and where it was two weeks ago so be ready to be a buyer now if we do get these buys right now here's my 16 if we do get the buy here at 74.2 it's not going to come at 74.2 what's going to happen is we're going to see it go and like i said i want to see a couple new highs here so give me a higher high pull back and now we're in now we're going higher so wait for it don't predict react we don't need to guess we don't need to guess we got plenty of room to make our money so wait for the higher high just a little swing high here you know maybe get above 77 or so right put it right back to the pullback and then we're on we got the buy targets overhead 1186 to 1188 1192.6 and 1198.3 those are our targets to the upside now let's talk about you scalpers out there that may want to get short be aware we get a level of support here at 69.1 use the same thing i just talked about so we'll go below the low remember be careful selling that break lower because you know what's going to happen right yeah bear trap take your money and then they'll give me the money when i buy it on the way back up so if you're going to sell short here get below 69.1 and stay below it okay remember that whole technique i told you about right find that last low wait for price to get below it if I can get my mouse together here it must be a gremlin on my computer get below that level and then sell it after it retraces and goes lower again gotta be real careful selling the break below 69.1 right you're gonna be begging to get stopped out and lose some money because remember I'm gonna be looking to buy that 64.9 right buyers will definitely swoop in here and look for some bargains okay good targets overhead you got great buy zones below now we're just waiting for the Russell to do its thing on Friday morning now ugh, this market man I'll tell you gold is literally somebody needs to call a medic and check this thing for a pulse I mean it's it's dead there's not a lot of personality to it right now and when you see stuff like this you 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 can't force these things now it's hard because we just came out of what two weeks of just money I mean it was just literally it was like an ATM machine just spitting out gold bars right I mean it was easy 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 the month of October but these big big huge moves that we saw right we made a killing we made enough in that move down in October right take the whole rest of the year off well we were there about June this year but the reality is though is that now it's going sideways this is expected I would expect nothing else besides this we had one of the biggest drops in gold in one month period in our history so we definitely have a reason for this price to be consolidating you know moving averages to catch up all the all the buyers and sellers are going to reanalyze here and figure out what their game plan is I honestly thought that we were going to get out of this thing once we got through the holiday this week but apparently that was not the case here just yet so how do we trade this it's a sideways range technically it's a consolidating sideways range or as I call it a wedge one of my favorite price structures but you got to stay patient this is a very easy type of scenario to trade but you're not going to trade it with a trend following strategy you're not going to trade it with breakouts right what you're going to look for is is you're going to look for price here to go lower buy those lows go higher sell those highs it's extremely important that you condition yourself to fade the moves right now now my long-term trend is bearish on gold so if I had to guess or let's say this if if I only had one trade to take tomorrow it would definitely be on the short side right I'm not even considering being a buyer here right now you can be a buyer and if you are going to be a buyer you've got some buy zones here below you 1150 1140 right the low here at 29 but if you're gonna be a buyer right now you're going against the trend so you better be taking your profit quickly eliminating that risk because you know what's gonna happen we're gonna bounce off that low right the rookies and retail traders they'll buy it okay and of course when they get stopped out and go lower right it's gonna help everybody who's following the trend it's gonna help add liquidity for all those sellers I have no problem if you want to buy into my cells no problem at all I will take your money all day long with you going counter trend okay that's how professionals make money they make money not by stealing it but just by using the retail traders and rookie traders who don't know any better they just give it to us right it's it's, it's the beautiful thing about trading 
So what I'm looking for is I would love to see gold get up to these highs. I would love to see it just kind of poke its head up here, right? Look around a little bit and then bam, right back down. Looking to sell the 71.5 up to 75. And then we've got some big areas of resistance here overhead. I have a major reversal line at 83.3 and I have a target, actually an extension up at 93. So if you take your extension all the way up, right, you'll see here you got that extension up there at 93. So again, would not be surprised, and I'm not changing my bearish tone here until what? When do I change my bearish tone? When we get up, pull back, and keep going, right? It's not enough to get a new high, just like it's not enough to get a new low. So right now, long-term trend is down. We have a sideways range. Sell the highs for the highest percentage trades. Buy the lows, right, if you want to be a scalper, but just be careful trying to be a buyer right now on gold because gold, just like the next market we'll look at, is suffering from some strong dollar syndrome right now, and it's definitely bearish. It's definitely bearish out there. So gold, I could go to a faster time frame right now, but you're not going to get much else there. There's not a lot to share on the faster time frame. It's pretty much the same thing, right? You don't really need another chart on this one. So all you need is that 32 anchor. You can see the key levels of resistance overhead, the key levels of support below. Use them, guys. And remember, stay the heck out of the, out of the middle here. Don't fiddle in that middle. Okay, buy those lows, sell those highs, and be careful there on gold in the middle. Now, I heard that we had a bearish move lower here on the crude. Yeah, just a little bit. Now, we called $75 a barrel three weeks ago. It was a relatively easy call, right? We've got strong dollar. We've got warm weather. We have a very, very significantly low demand right now for crude oil. And we have a tremendous amount of supply. All of this, all of this is combined to be, well, again, like I said, it was an easy call. And $75 a barrel is a big round number. It's a huge psychological level. So we knew where we were going to be headed to, right? We got the direction that was easy. We knew we were going lower. We took a look at the bottom and we said, all right, $75 should be pretty easy. Now, I personally don't think we're done. I think we're going to see $70 a barrel this year, if not this year, early January, February. The reason I say that is, is because we have a break of a channel. Now, you gotta, you got to kind of zoom out a little bit further on this, but we have a break of a channel. There's a big channel here. We broke the channel, and usually when we make that new low, we're going to pop up and make another low down, right? So we are probably going to be seeing those $70 a barrel. Now, will it come tomorrow? Probably not. Sure, I hope so. Definitely hope so for all the, all the uh, minivans out there and, and all the boats out there and truckers out there. I hope we do hit $70 a barrel tomorrow, but it's probably not likely. One thing we know for tomorrow is this. We had a huge move down today, okay? I mean, I, 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 kept, I kept glancing back in our chat room here at School of Trade. We, we have a chat room here at School of Trade open 24 hours a day, 365. And it's where our students can kind of mingle during the day. They can share ideas, meet up with other students on the weekends, you know, things like that. You know, it, it adds a level of community to our membership. And so, and of course, day trading is a real lonely game if you're by yourself. So, you know, as a member of School of Trade, you've got the access to our trade room, unlimited trade room, and of course, our chat room as well. Well... I keep, I keep going back into the chat room today. Of course, I'm always on and off calls throughout the day with our students. I keep going back in the chat room, and it's just trade after trade after. I mean, literally, there was so much volume on the way down that you could trade this all the way until 5 o'clock when the electronic trading hours right, finished up. I mean, it was, it was that easy to make money today on crude. Now, given we did have to see the drop here, we broke below the 76, and then it was just retracements all the way down. It was a relatively easy move down. Now, big, big, big move today. Usually, that will lead to a very small move tomorrow. And that's usually what gets traders all messed up. See, when I was a new trader, this is what happened to me. Maybe you can relate. We'd have a big trending day, right? I'd make a lot of money. Right, make a few thousand bucks. Big trending day. Anybody can make money in a big trending day, guys. All right, but let's let's be honest. You could have fallen asleep, hit your head on the keyboard, hit the sell button, and you made a fortune today. Right? 
anyone can make money on a big down day like this. It's one of the easiest scenarios you're ever going to see. And if you made money today, good job, right? But just, again, don't go, don't go building your own lifelike statue of yourself, right, with, with a barrel of crude because we're not quite there yet. But what I had a hard time with when I was a new student is I used to see this big trending day then what would happen obviously is is I would try to apply the same but now more aggressive because at this point I think I'm king of the world right I just made a couple thousand bucks but again as a new student we you know as a new trader we don't really think that way and tomorrow what happens is this right we get range bound we get sideways right we get consolidation even worse we get traps right that's what happens isn't it we get these little bear traps because you know, you know professionals out there are waiting to take your money, right? Try to go lower, they're going to trap you back in. Try to go higher, they're going to trap you back in, right? And it's going to go sideways, and it's going to make you cry. Well, at least it to me, right? I'd be crying like a baby. I gave back all my money. I made $5,000 going short, and I just lost ten grand because I tried to get too aggressive. I increased my position size. You know what I'm talking about. Right, you made all that money yesterday. Now you're trading 50 contracts, and now you're broke, you're confused, and you've lost all your confidence. Right? That's what happened to me. This happened to me over and over and over again. Don't let this happen to you tomorrow. Okay? So you made a killing today. You should have. If you didn't make money in this market today, guys, something is seriously wrong. Call me in the office. Let's figure out how to get you right on the ship. Let's let's right this ship. Because if you didn't make money today on this, guys, again, we either need to get you some new glasses, right, or a bigger monitor or, or something, right, because something's wrong, okay? Again, you could have fallen asleep at your keyboard, hit the sell button, and made a killing today. So if you didn't make money today, something's seriously wrong. But tomorrow, though, do not, do not let this easy money get you off your game tomorrow. Remember, make it prove it to you. Wait for the setups, wait for the entries, and proper trade management. It's so easy when you're trading with the market's money, right? What does a gambler say? Well, I can afford a couple losses. I made all that money yesterday, right? Wrong, right? Or how about this one? How about this one? We had this huge move down. It can't keep going lower. I might as well buy, right? Wrong spoken like a gambler if you were in my casino i would lock the front door put you in the best suite and feed you caviar all weekend because your train of thought is going to cause you to go broke we cannot we cannot fall victim to the gambler's fallacy tomorrow okay don't take the bait tomorrow i would expect a very significant consolidated day i hope i'm wrong i'm telling you right now i hope i'm wrong Okay, but usually big, big moves like this are, and this was not just your average little slip and fall. This was a huge, a high volume sell off. Now, good. Again, I hope I'm wrong, but just be aware tomorrow is most likely going to be a little bit of range bound scenario here. Be aware of the fake out breakouts. Be aware of the traps because tomorrow what's going to happen is all the rookies out there that think they're king of the markets now are going to be swinging for the fences again tomorrow. It's Friday, right? The juices are flowing. The accounts are filled up, right? Perfect scenario to give it all back. So be careful. So what am I going to do tomorrow? I'm going to stay to the sell side. You cannot look at this right now and say, it's gone down so far. It can't keep going lower. Oh, yes, it can. Yes, it can. <laughs> there is no reason why this can't keep going. Okay, so get that out of your head right now. We cannot use what happened in the past to tell us what's going to happen tomorrow. We have to wait for proof. What's my trend? Trend is down. Easy. What do I want to do when the trend is down? I want to sell. Okay, where do I want to sell? Well, go back to the real estate analogy. You put your house in the market for sale. Would you like to sell your home when the market is at the lows or at the highs? At the highs, right? I'm going to sell my pocket full of gold coins, right? I take my gold coins into the old buy gold place in the shopping mall, right? Do I want to sell my gold coins when gold prices are at the all-time highs or at the all-time lows? At the all-time highs. I want to sell when prices are high. Where is price right now on crude? 
it's at five-year lows, almost six-year lows. It's incredible. 2009 was five years ago. <laughs> what? I know. Time flies. I can't wait to see those flying cars in 2025, right? It'll probably happen, too. So we see we're down at those lows. I cannot be a seller here. You can, but the problem is, is you're going to get stopped out more often trying to sell these lows. We see this little channel we drew in here. That channel is also telling us we're down to the lows of that channel. So bottom line is we came an inch away from that target we drew in last night, but we got to stay patient. Wait for the best sells here after we go back up a little bit, right? I would definitely expect to see a short covering rally, right? A little bit of profit taking, a little bit of bargain hunting. But like I said earlier, though, I can't just assume, right? You can't Think of it like a big drop down. Um, I better buy because it can't keep going lower, right? You can't think like that. You've got to wait to see the setup, wait to see the buy. And remember, if you buy this tomorrow, you are going counter trend. So use a tight stop, trail it, lock up that profit, right? Don't get too greedy. Guys like me are banking on the fact that you'd be buying this thing up and I'm going to look to sell it right back down. I got 75.84, 76.59, 77.64. I'll tell you, that's the dream come true right there. That is the sell right there. If you're a long-term seller on crude oil, you've got to sell. If we get to that 77.64 to 77 area, that's a no-brainer. It's the it's the it's the best by a long shot, right? Because I got two trend lines there colliding, right? We've been talking about that all all week here. So be ready on this for crude. I don't think we're going to go from 74 up to 77, but we did it today, right? So why, why can't it happen tomorrow? No, no reason why it can't. So tomorrow morning, when you come into my trade room tomorrow morning, we're going to be following the trend, finding setups, and finding entry patterns. We're not going to let the excitement from today have us acting like a bunch of gamblers, right? We want to finish this week with, with the profit we still made earlier this week. Okay. Last but not least here, 16 anchor chart on crude. Look at that channel. Now this is one of those channels that you know is probably going to be broken. It's, it's just, it's too narrow. Well, in fact, if, if you're my buddy, John Henry, right, he would tell you it's already broken, right? That's right. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, John. So we know we broke that channel, right? Broken the downside. So as we say in our trade room, right, that's our dead man walking. Right, we overshot the channel. That's a dead man walking. So now it should retrace here. Uh, Keyword should. Right. Again, we can't say guarantee because this is this is crude we're talking about. Right. And we 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 just simply can't make that rookie mistake. So we know that anything can happen tomorrow. But I'm definitely expecting with that overshoot of that channel, I'm definitely expecting to get a little bit of blow off. Right. Overshoot too aggressive. You know, it's always what happens. Right. You get a little bit too aggressive. It's like what happened up here at the highs, right? It's a classic example, token print, right? Token print, token print, overshoots it. So we're going to see the retracement, and I'm looking for sells. 74.95, 74.95, 75.19, 75.33. I've got tons of selling opportunities here above us right now. 75.94, 76.08, 76.42. Again, I don't think we're going to get all the way up to 76, 77, but if we do, you better be looking to sell it there too, okay? Be careful on the buy side on crude. It's going to be so tempting to buy this crude. If you do buy it, tight target, tight stop, lock out that risk because you know at any moment it could roll over and collapse again. Again, I do expect to get to $70 a barrel. Will it be tomorrow? Probably not. Probably sometime next week if, if, if we do see it this month. It's probably not going to be for a while. Okay, But, hey, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I've been, I haven't been around the markets for that long. I've been doing this for almost 14 years now. I think I've seen pretty much everything at this point in my career. But I, I have learned after the debacle we saw in 2008, I have learned never say never and close does not count right? Horseshoes and hand grenades. All right, guys, wrapping up here with our news for tomorrow. Stay focused on that sell side here. So we got buys on Russell, sells on gold and crude. And what do we have in store for tomorrow? Now, boy, they really didn't give us anything out of that, out of that little secret meeting between the ECB and the Fed this week. That was weird. That was weird. I'm sorry, but when the Fed and the ECB get together, 
Wouldn't you expect to see headlines on that? <laughs> exactly, right? No, there wasn't anything. There wasn't anything, right? You would have never known it was happening. Uh, that's a, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, as, I'm not that much of a conspiracy theorist, but that is a little interesting, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. They don't put those two groups in the room for no reason and then not tell anybody about it. Didn't hear anything afterwards either, right? There really wasn't a lot of publicity for it. Ah, that tells me something. I don't know what it tells me right now, but it definitely piques my curiosity for next week. Don't be surprised if we see some ish hit the fan next week. You know what I'm talking about. So we have the news here. No news overnight. No news out of Japan. No news out of China. Nothing, out of, nothing down under. We get a clear path here to tomorrow morning. Now, just a little bit of news tomorrow. Just a little. We got 2 o'clock GDP, 2.45 GDP, 4 o'clock GDP, 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock GDP, and we got, of course, the, what is that, housing, something like that, 5 o'clock. So we got a ton of news tomorrow. Almost all of it is Red Star News in London. So if you have the luxury of living in the sweet spot time zone, if you're on gamut time, if you're in London, enjoy, right, enjoy. You've got some great news tomorrow, and that will definitely get the market's price action moving well on a Friday morning. Friday mornings are all about early day opportunities. You're not trading in the afternoon, so it's good to see we get a bunch of good Red Star news here to kick that day off for you guys in London. Then we have what is probably going to be the most important news of the day, retail sales. Now, we just heard from my good friends at Walmart, right, my favorite place in the world. Sometimes I just hang out on the weekends. You know, I try, to, I try to go during rush hour times, you know, make sure, I, make sure I wear my nicest attire, things like that. Anyways, we heard from Walmart today, and they were projecting a relatively strong same-store sales for tomorrow. So, okay, Walmart, kind of a, kind of a barometer of, uh, of the rest of the market out there. Uh, what else did we hear from today? We heard from Kohl's today. They, they told us they had a slowdown in October, but they're still projecting for an increase in same-store sales tomorrow as well. So it's, it'll be very interesting to see what, hear what happens. Remember, why, is retail, why are retail sales important? Why are retail sales important? Because it's a lagging indicator of the health of the average consumer, right? If you have a job, you go to the mall, right? You go to the mall, you buy clothes, you buy stuff, you buy junk, right? You're, we're, we're consumers now in this world, and it's not just the U.S., right? <laughs> used to be the U.S., now it's everybody, What's next? If you have a job, you go to the shopping mall and you help retail sales. What's the next leg up? If you have a job that you see potential in and consistency and a good paycheck, then you buy a home. Make sense? Now, for the first time in the past five, uh, five years, almost seven, I think it was seven years, 2007, right, seven years, we saw the Jolts report today. There was a very, very bright uh, silver lining in that Jolts report today. The quits. More people quit their job and took another job in the last 30 days than any other time in the last seven years. Now, why would it be a good thing for somebody to quit their job? Well, if you've been listening to the Jolts report, if you've been listening to Janet Yellen, she's been telling us this. The biggest concern that they've had at the Fed is that people feel like they're locked in their jobs. There's no lateral movement, right? Once you get a job, you're scared to death of going out and looking for another one because you may not get it. You may not, right? That's, the, that's what happens in a real sluggish economy. You get a job, you're so scared to lose it, you hold on to it. Well, if people start quitting their jobs more often and getting new jobs, right? Well, that tells us something there. That tells us the consumer sentiment numbers we've been seeing the past few weeks haven't been lying. That tells us that a little bit of a pullback in manufacturing may have been just that, just a little pullback in manufacturing. That tells us that the sniffles we've been seeing out of the U.S. data over the past few weeks, probably not that bad at all. So today we saw some really bullish numbers out of the Jolts report. Okay, jobless claims, eh, nobody really cares about. So tomorrow's retail sales, I'm really anxious to see tomorrow's retail sales. Now, whether you care about this stuff or not, right, I'm just, I'm talking about this because I find it very interesting, right? But in all reality, we're price action traders. We're pattern traders, okay? Tomorrow's retail sales report is nothing more than just a number for us, and we'll be looking for trends, setups, and patterns. So don't think about it too much, but I'm very curious to see what this comes out as tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. 
is it going to affect my trading tomorrow? No, no. I'm not going to use anything I read in this news that, that won't change how I trade tomorrow. Not at all. And not next week either. Right? So news is not going to have that type of impact. But it's definitely, excuse me, Red Star News, 8.30 a.m., it's going to move the market. You're going to see some good price action tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So be ready in the U.S. session. Tomorrow, we've got all this news here in the London session. Remember, that usually will move things around. So the first few minutes of the U.S. session after 7 a.m., be patient. I would imagine tomorrow morning by 7 a.m., things will be a little bit sleepy because of all that action they saw early in the session. And then we got retail sales at 8.30. That should kickstart the U.S. session tomorrow. We've got manufacturing out of the CAD, and we get consumer sentiment at 9.55, 10 o'clock. Business inventories at 10 o'clock, and then we're done. All right? We will not be trading tomorrow afternoon, and so we know that we are going to be, well, basically time is ticking tomorrow morning. So Friday mornings, get in early, get out early. We get a ton of news on the schedule for you guys to work around. Set your alarm. Don't trade the news. Trade around the news, right? And find that trend, find those setups, and find those entry patterns. Guys and gals, as I said at the beginning of this newsletter tonight, if you're not making money right now, if you're not loving every minute right now, guys, something's wrong. Something's wrong. These markets are awesome. These markets are awesome. Whether you're pattern traders, price action traders, scalpers, or swing traders, guys, you owe it to yourself. Get trained. Get the knowledge you need. Get the skills and get the resources you need. And let's make a fortune in the end of the year into the brand new year. I'm excited for you. I hope you're excited as well. And boy, days like today, they just they throw fuel. They throw gasoline on that fire. We are amped up here at School of Trade and ready to finish off a great week. Don't forget, head back over to Sideways Markets. If you're not there already, download today's charts, grab your free pass, register for the newsletter. And as always, guys, don't be afraid to mosey over here to schooltrade.com. And over here at schooltrade.com, don't forget to register for our free trial. You're going to learn more as part of that free trial than most other paid websites that charge thousands of dollars. So give me a shot in that free trial. I'll, prove, I'll earn your trust there. We offer three levels of membership, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And we always have someone standing by. Literally, they're, they're locked in a cage. But we always have someone standing by 24 hours a day, 365, to help you guys out with any questions you have. Guys, awesome week. Awesome, awesome week, right? We get to celebrate our veterans this week. We had a huge amount of range, tons of volatility. What more could we ask for besides another awesome day on Friday morning? So stick to the plan tomorrow. Don't be that gambler that I talked about earlier. And don't forget to share this information with a friend. Have yourselves a great weekend. Don't forget in the weekend, spend that time with the people that mean the most to you. We've only got so many weekends of our life here on this planet of ours. So be well, be happy, be profitable, and be there tomorrow with me in the trade room. We open up at 8 a.m. My name is Joseph. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.